Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, my name is Tori and today I'm going to take you guys through my reading plans for the month of July. So far this month is already off to a really good start. I finished one book and I'm currently reading another and I am I'm kind of obsessed with this book that I'm currently reading. We're going to talk about it. And then I do have a couple of buddy reads coming up this month that I'm looking forward to. And just overall, I feel like July is going to be a really great month because for the last like month and a half, my reading has just drastically <laughs> just fallen apart and I haven't read too much. So I'm really looking forward to kind of getting back into the swing of things for July. I do have several books to share with you. So let's get into it. <music> So let's start with the buddy reads first. One of the books that I'm going to be reading this month is Shades of Grey and this is by Jasper Ford and I'm going to be buddy reading this book with Shannon from That's So Poe and I'm so excited for it. I love Shannon's channel. She just her content is amazing. She reads a lot of science fiction, a lot of great underrated science fiction too and she's just so calm and chill and just the way that she reviews these books and the way that she speaks about them is just I, I genuinely love her reviews so definitely go check out her channel go subscribe I will leave a link to her channel in the description box below and this book has sounded interesting to me for a while now I actually spoke about this several videos ago because I thought it reminded me of Red Rising by Pierce Brown so in Shades of Grey we have this dystopian society that is run by a colorotocracy and so basically the way you perceive color will dictate your standing in society and that is really all I know about this going into it there's I mean there's a whole description on the back but that's really kind of the gist of it the next book I'm going to be buddy reading is The Word Exchange and this is by Elena Graydon and I'm going to be reading this with Olive from A Book Olive and if you're not subscribed already you need to go to Olive's channel go subscribe go check her out she reads a lot of great literary fiction but her other biggest love is nonfiction, and just her reviews are just, just so well thought out so put so well put together and I just really love her channel as well so we're going to be reading The Word Exchange and in this this takes place in a society where dictionaries and books and newspapers are kind of banned but we have these characters who are working to create this dictionary and the editor of the dictionary who's the main character's father he goes missing and it sends the other characters on this journey to kind of you know find out what happened what's going on and why would someone want to kidnap someone <laughs> working on the dictionary so this sounds really epic I can't wait to get to this and yeah this also appeared in that same video I was talking about Shades of Grey in where I thought this really reminded me of the book Lexicon by Max Berry which is one of my favorite books of all time so I would love to see how I find this book not even just in comparison to that one, but see if it still gives me those lexicon vibes. So I can't wait to read this. The next book on my TBR for July is The Q, and this is by Basma Abdel Aziz. So The Q is set in this unnamed Middle Eastern city, and we have this thing, this entity, I'm not sure what it's classified as, but it's called The Gate. So the people in the city, they go up to this gate, they form the queue, the line uh, at this gate to basically ask its permission for a basic things and they have all these desires and these dreams but the gate doesn't seem very responsive to these people's requests and it sounds like we're following a handful of characters who are, who are in this queue and who are trying to make their way up to the gate to ask it for something so that's really all I know about this so far it, on the back it's described as this mixture of Kafka and Orwell and with a mix of surrealism to it so I'm really looking forward to reading this as well. So the next book I plan on reading in July is one that's actually been on and off my TBR list for several months now. I've been trying to read this book for a while and that is Planet Fall by Emma Newman and this is the first in I believe it's a trilogy and in this we have this main character named Ren and she believed in this visionary's idea of life away from Earth. And from there, it sounds like Ren becomes one of the first people to leave Earth and establish this new colony. And she works there as this 3D printer engineer while at the same time kind of keeping the lies of the colony to herself. Sounds like there's a lot going on in here. That's really all I know about this. But yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this. I've heard really good things about this book. And then the next book that I plan on reading in July is The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. And this is by N.K. Jemisin. And this is actually her debut novel that came out a long time ago. <laughs> and this is the book one in the Inheritance Trilogy. So I cannot wait to read this. I After I read the Broken Earth Trilogy, I've been saying to myself, 
you need to go read the inheritance trilogy it just needs to happen i've heard really mixed things about this i heard it's definitely not as strong as the broken earth trilogy but it's still good but in this this is a fantasy novel and we are following this main character who following the death of her mother she is summoned to this kingdom of sky and it's there that she learns that she is the heiress to the king and what follows from there just sounds really epic and I can't wait to get to this. So if you've read the Inheritance Trilogy and also the Broken Earth Trilogy, let me know down in the comments how you know you find both books as one do you like one better than the other let me know your thoughts on that so now let's get into the books that i am currently reading let's start with the one i'm not far in at all and that is the vor and this is by b catling and this is the first in a series as well a lot of series over here so this is the first in a series and for some reason this reminds me of annihilation by jeff vandermeer we have this strange creepy forest again and just some weird entities living in this forest and so one of our we actually have a couple of characters it sounds like that we're following but one of our main characters decides to venture into this forest and then we have another character who is determined to stop him so so far i have read the prologue of this book and also a couple of um, pages of chapter one and what i'm already noticing about the writing style is that it just feels really dense it feels really like if you were to read it out loud it just sounds like a mouthful so i feel like there's just a lot of information being thrown at us at once but i'm really looking forward to continuing on with this and then the other book that i'm currently reading and just absolutely loving right now i'm just 1000% obsessed with this right now that is the city we became by nk jemison and this is her newest release it just came out a couple of months ago and this is the first book in a planned trilogy and i'm on page 141 and this is great this was supposed to be my may read but like i said i completely fell off reading in may and didn't read anything in june so i did finally go back to this book and i'm so happy i picked it up this is so good essentially it's set in this world where like cities can be born they can die and they need kind of people to help them with these things and it it gets to a point where cities can become people or people can become the embodiment of a particular city and so in this book, it takes place in New York City. And so we have characters who are the embodiment of different boroughs. It is great. It is. I can't even explain it beyond that right now because it's still so much happening for me. I'm still very early in this book, but it is, it's great. I love N.K. Jemison's writing, two pieces. I can't even convey that more strongly than that. I love the way she, her, like I love her world building. It's just so rich and so layered and the turn like turn of phrases are it's so clever ah, i love this i love nk jemison this is like my nk jemison fangirl video this is amazing so far i really hope like just the rest of the book for me continues to be this strong because this is truly incredible so far and then finally this is the book that i've already finished and that is a good girl's guide to murder and this is by holly jackson and i'm not going to go into too much detail about this book because i do want to include it in my wrap up at the end of the month where I do want to talk about it a little bit more but just very quickly this is a young adult novel and this is classified as a YA thriller but I it feels more like a YA mystery <laughs> there's nothing really like too thrilling about it in my opinion I don't mean that in a rude way I just think it's more of a mystery it reads and unfolds like a mystery so I think this novel is heavily heavily inspired by the podcast Serial if you're unfamiliar, I will leave a link to it in the description box below for you to check out. It's a great pro uh, true crime podcast. So this book is heavily inspired by that. And we have this girl named Pippa who was in her final year of school in high school. And for her final year project, she takes it upon herself to return to this closed investigation from five years ago where this girl in her town, Andy, was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal. Pippa, she takes it upon herself to reopen this case for her project and really dig deep into the investigation and what happened because things just don't things are not adding up and just everything surrounding the case is just kind of weird overall i really did enjoy this i liked just the way we got from point a to point b to point C. It, I don't know, just looking back, it was pretty great the way things unfolded. I thought it was really clever, but I did think this book was starting to get a little bit too long, especially after one of the reveals happened. I was thinking to myself, like, what more could possibly, be, like, what more could possibly be going on right now? But no, overall, I do think this book was good. I think if you're interested in reading it, definitely go check it out. This book is the first in a series, which I was not expecting. I 
this book honestly feels like a standalone novel. I have no idea what could even be happening in the second book because it is just, I don't know, you have to read it to know what I mean, but it really ends like it's gonna, like it should be a standalone book. So one thing I do want to mention though about this book in particular, if you do pick up this book, I highly recommend that you pick up this edition. This is the UK edition, this red, this white cover with the red thread lines on it and it was published by Electric Monkey over in the UK. You have to read this edition. That's just my personal opinion because I have a very quick story, very quick rant about <laughs> about how this book was published in America. So over the weekend, just very quick story, I traveled for the fourth. I did end up taking this physical book with me, but I didn't want to be pulling it out all the time. So I have Libby. 100% free you should go download it it's um, you have access to your local libraries digital books there you know audio books that you can download for free so I took to Libby and I looked up a good girl's guide to murder so I could download it to my Kindle and just have it more easily accessible while I was traveling so little did I know I was downloading the American version of the book and it was just it's that's so weird to me that how different the books are the American edition I forgot who it's published by but it's a big publisher and like the whole the setting is different it's not in the UK anymore the terms are all different and it's just like I was thinking to myself like why was it necessary to set the book in Connecticut I don't know it's what do you guys think about that I don't know why like the change was so drastic so it was a little jarring for me to open up my Kindle and try to pick up where I left off one of the things that I thought was really interesting was so this is not a spoiler. The main character Pippa, she has this thing where she, when she's nervous, this quirk where she like just starts spewing off random facts that nobody knows. And a lot of those facts though are directly related to the UK. And so, so there's just something lost in the character. It doesn't, I don't know. I, it was reading like portions of it from the American version was just really strange. I don't know why that change was made. <laughs> like we can't understand UK terminology. Is it because it's a young adult book? And they thought like young adult Americans wouldn't understand the, it's, it's weird. I don't know why that was done, but if you wanna check out this book, my recommendation is to check out the UK version. That is all, yeah. So that's it for me, you guys. Those are the books that I plan on making my way through in the month of July. Let me know down in the comments what you're reading this month, what you've already read. I think I'm going to be participating in Reading Rush this year again. We'll see how that goes. Let me know if you're going to be doing that in a couple of weeks. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.